<clears throat> so last time when we talked about the stresses on the wellbore, the most important of those being the hoop stress, uh, we didn't consider any effect of thermal elasticity, or we haven't really talked about thermal elasticity at all in this class. But I think all of us know from intuition that when you heat things up, they expand. Right? When you cool them down, they contract. Um, most materials behave that way, and rock is no different, especially rock that has a lot of silica content or quartz because uh, it's very, it has a lot of thermal conductivity compared to the rest of uh, other materials that make up rocks. So uh, when we talk about temperature dependence, first of all, it's strongly time dependent. So the, the length of time that uh, the, basically the drilling mud that's typically cooler than the rock at the bit, um, the, the length of time that it's in contact, that the cool mud is in contact, uh, then, you, then you have time or a time scale in which the fluid diffuses, I'm sorry, the, the temperature diffuses into the rock, okay? Uh, and there are equations that model that time dependence and, you know, certainly in a computational setting, we can do a pretty good job modeling that, that time dependence. Um, but for you know, our purposes in this ca ca class or sort of an elementary approach, we're just going to look at the effect of the steady state condition. So, uh, you know, meaning after a long time that then the, the, the temperature has time to equilibriate. The, te the fluid, the mud and the rock itself would equilibriate over some time and you'd have uh, this kind of uh, hoop stress would be changed by this term, okay? And so this term uh, has basically parameters that you know. E is Young's modulus, nu is Poisson ratio. Uh, the one that you don't know is alpha. And this is the thermal conductivity of the rock. Um, and again, like I mentioned here, it's strongly dependent, mostly dependent on the silica content. Okay, so uh, a lot of rocks that have a lot of silica will uh, be able to conduct heat much easier than rocks that don't. Okay. And so uh, this is just gives you some pictures of uh, the hoop stress and the radial stress. Uh, I, 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 f I found my color picture, picture, so I think last time I mentioned I, I didn't have time to get the color ones, but uh, I found my copy that had the color for uh, pictures. So um, the hoop stress, uh, these three curves represent at different time scales. So again, we're plotting the hoop stress as a function of normalized distance from the wellbore. So at one, we're right at the wellbore wall, and at two, we're two times away from the wellbore wall. And so you can see how the radial stress is increased due to this temperature change, okay, so 25 degrees C temperature change, and there's also a, a delta P here, a difference in the mud weight and the pore pressure, okay. Um, uh, ch changing the, f the fluid or cool, you know, having a cool fluid actually sort of has the same effect uh, as, uh, ha as the mud, mud weight, is increasing the density of the mud weight, okay. It, it, increases the hoop stress a lot and gives, adds a little bit of stability, okay? Uh, so the, again, the, the different lines here represent time. So you can see as, as time increases, then the lines all sort of collapse onto one another, representing steady state, okay? So the actual lines I'm plotting here are the full time dependent uh, response, or at least from those three but you can see that they all sort of asymptotically approach the same value in long, long time. And that value, um, that value is, uh, well, at least I wrote for theta theta, the, the change due to a change in temperature, alpha E dt 1 minus U. Okay, so that value uh, that they're that they're collapsing to would be this, okay. And there's also 
a, a component associated with sigma RR, but this is actually, in fact, zero at the wellbore, the, the change is zero at the wellbore. Uh, so therefore, you know, because we're, failure occurs first at the wellbore because the other stresses are highest there, uh, it's typically not, we re really don't care about the, the change in stress due to temperature, radial stress due to temperature at the wellbore. Um, at the wellbore wall. So, as I sort of alluded to, this might raise the question, could we add stability through cooling, right? So um, if we could cool the drilling mud enough uh, such that the temperature, the effect of the stress would be significant enough, then we could add stability just in the same way that we add stability through mud weight, right? Um, with the added advantage in that uh, if we, uh, you know, mud weight, increasing the mud weight also increases uh, basically the amount of solids that get into the material and causes formation damage. So if you could do it strictly through cooling, you wouldn't have this formation damage issue, right? So when formation damage, uh, I think you guys know what I'm saying. It's, it's like a, a, a decrease in permeability due to the solids in the mud getting into the, into the uh, rock right near the wellbore. Okay, so theoretically, yeah, you, you can, in fact. And so what, what you see here is, I think, on the, on the right is the reference case. Uh, we, this is one of the ones that was plotted last time uh, using the same. Uh, um, so I actually can't recall what, what the exact conditions were, but they were in the last set of slides. So, so if, if you just, we'll just call it reference for now. And then if we add in the effect of temperature at the same uh, where the delta T is 25 degrees, like was on the last slide, then this solid line traces out the area that you would see wellbore breakout uh, according to the more Coulomb model and everything that we discussed last time in the reference case. So you can see that the breakouts are decreased uh, in size due to the effect of cooling just the fluid 25 degrees. Okay, so that's in theory, right? Uh, in practical application, it's just not that possible to significantly cool and hold at depth, uh, hold the drilling fluid at a much, much cooler temperature such that you get a delta T, okay? Um, so practically, it's it's really not, not useful. And even, I mean, Theoretically, it could be done, but it would probably add so much expense that it wouldn't be worth it. It's already quite expensive.